We are fighting a war of attrition in that we kill, kill, kill in self-defense as long as they are going to come and fight with us. <laughs> the only fear is, suppose they come at least 2,000 yards height and they drop somebody here. Let them do uh, But if they drop, now I'm having one MG. Let them so this MG will take Let them drop. They will get lost in this area. Yeah. The Pakistan government dismissed the guerrillas as a bunch of miscreants and the war as a border skirmish. I was surprised to find a highly organized resistance led by officers with impressive military records. Here, Major Khaled briefs subsector commander Captain Salik Chaudhry, who before he defected was a staff captain in headquarters Dhaka. Major Khaled is 35 an officer with the Pakistan Army for 13 years, trained as a commander by the Americans. Eight months ago, he was with the Black Watch in Scotland. When he defected from the Pakistan Army in March, he brought most of his brigade, their Chinese weapons, and even their teacups with him. And you have heard yourself yesterday, the shelling, the rocketing by the artillery and the aircraft, and then tanks the other day when you went to Feni. But this is not border skirmishes. Border skirmishes means all small little, uh, small empire. But here a full-scale war is being conducted by the Pak Army. We intend to make the whole nation the fighting force. And the hardcore being provided by the regular troops, that is the Bengal Tigers, it has this good reputation of being good fighters, and it has fought well. The hardcore of the Liberation Army are professional soldiers, but thousands of students and peasants are joining them. There is little time for formal training, so they're sent to the front unarmed and untrained with the regular troops to get experience. And if they're lucky, a gun captured from the Pakistan Army. Ishak, a 19-year-old student, took us with his patrol to inspect several villages. He is said to have killed 56 men. There was shelling yesterday, and one motor she landed here, three-inch motor. And it killed a cow, you know. And on that side of the village also, a few civilians were injured by fire from small arms. You see, shelling continues here almost all the time. And you've been very see, lucky enough not to have any shelling right now. <laughs> the guerrillas' lack of arms and ammunition is compensated by their passion for an independent Bangladesh and their hatred of the West Pakistanis is constantly renewed by the stories that the refugees tell them. I wish I could take you inside. All the cantonments in Bangladesh are nothing but concentration camps. These hundreds and thousands of girls are kept there as prisoners. They are tortured, they are raped, they are dishonored, and, they're, and after that they are killing them. You see all the dead bodies are floating in the rivers. But this is surely several months ago, not now. It is going on still now. Two of my son, I lost there, and my houses has been looted, and uh, my other articles also looted. Everything lost there. Then I find that I found that my life also in Sigo. But did your son do anything to the military? Nothing. Did nothing. Then why did they shoot them? Their habit is this. Their habit is this. They are murdering. All through the, they are murdering. All along they are murdering. But how long not will only, it... Not only my two sons. Many, many people. Many, many people shoot it. He saw his father, mother and everybody of the family killed by the Punjabis. And of course his <coughs> sister, who was about to get married, was kidnapped by the Punjabis and has been taken away. And he heard the story from the other villagers that she has been probably tortured and you know, dragged out of that place brutally and has been taken away. And he was left with no alternative. <clears throat> and now he says, I have nothing to lose in this world. And he decided to join Mukti Foj and he wants to take the revenge. Yeah, yeah, is the initiator of all this. He is the greatest culprit that a human civilization can imagine. He is just in the same rank with Hitler and his companions, Eichmann and others. My life, God knows how I shall pass my life. Now, 
I am loitering Indian in the dark, sometimes living here, sometimes living there. This way I am passing my time. 98 East Pakistanis out of every hundred voted for them in a democratic election. But the West rulers refused the League's demands and decided to impose its power by force. What he says is they had first of all voted for Army League. And that was one of their faults. And later on, they have been feeding us the Mukti Fauj. And uh, that was their fault. And when they got them unarmed and no Mukti Fauj was around, so the Pak Army came in and just burnt off the village and killed a few of them. These people were unarmed and uh, couldn't put up any resistance, Pak Army just came and slaughtered them and raped the women, burned the houses, and there are many villages sideways, just like this village. The safety of the refugees and the peace of the village was in jeopardy as we left. Throughout the journey, we were rarely out of earshot of the Pakistan shelling, but now it was getting nearer, and as we left, a group of Mukti Forge was being drafted in to try and counter the assault. People may be thinking, that it is a leftist insurgency or few clandestine activity. But I can assure you it is a militant insurgency whereby the people stood against injustice. We are fighting on three fronts. That is political, economic and military. All these three fights will go simultaneously. Politically, so far, as you have seen, that Yahya regime could not, and I am sure will not, be able to form a government. Even if it succeeds, it will be nothing but a bunch of quislings. We are not allowing the communication to be restored. Because in any country, if you want to start the trade, the first thing is communication. We have not allowed him to ply the trains. We have not allowed him to run the roads, bridges are being blown. This is one aspect of the economy, that is the communication. Captain, could you describe the fighting in your sector? In my sector? It's just like fighting any other war. What do you mean? I'm, I'm, uh, I know you are convinced, or uh, probably you, uh, you foreigners especially, you have been hearing a lot of news and propaganda by the Pakistan radio, that is just a border skirmish. But uh, yesterday you have seen, you went with myself and you saw this, uh, 20, uh, one of uh, uh, five millimeter howitzer, 25 pounder, and 120 millimeter mortars. They are all landing in border skirmish. You don't have that, and uh, probably with that telescopic lens, you might have seen some uh, Pakistani troops also. They are bunkers deployed, and we are fighting a regular warfare. How can you call it a border skirmish? And I wish you go back and you explain your people. This is a full-fledged war, and we are just holding in this base, and we go and we play hell into them. I go inside. Right inside, I go behind them, I go on their side, I go anywhere I feel like. I kill them. Captain, it's now three months since the fighting started. Yes. You've been existing on <coughs> the ammunition and the weapons you brought out with you. How much longer can this continue? Well, it will continue as long as we have the resources and as long as we carry on capturing their ammunition. And uh, <coughs> of course, we expect that some country will come to our aid. At least you have come, you have seen how the fighting is going on. Well, if somebody comes to our aid, only thing that we need is arms and ammunition. Arms we have, we have to maintain them, but we need some heavy weapons and ammunition. If that is the thing we get, then there is no problem, we can continue fighting. And uh, if we don't get anything at all, well, you know the condition, what is happening in Sudan. They don't have any arms and ammunition, they are fighting. They are fighting with sticks, they are fighting, they are adopting different tactics. So that's what we are going to do. But Captain, about you personally, I mean, what about your family? But my family, in fact, uh, I don't know what is happening to them. I have given up because I have seen the fate of other families when an officer has deserted and joined this Mukti Forge. What happened to their families? They were all captured as prisoners and kept in the cantonment. And I don't know what has been done. So knowing all this, I ran away. You see? So I, did, I gave up. I, I just thought about God, whatever God does. And that's all. And I left. So I have no right to think about them, you see. Since I have sacrificed them, so how can I think about them now? Another base camp deep in the jungle. Major Khalid debriefs his officers and plans further operations. As most refugees from the war are Hindu and the West Pakistan army is Muslim, there is a danger that people might think that this is a religious war. 
But every one of these guerrillas, in fact, every Mukti Forge soldier I met was a Muslim. But the only thing which I am worried about, that is the protection of this war, you know. As long as the war is continued for years and years and years, what is going to happen is the misery of the people. Misery in the sense that there will be a lot of killing, crossfire, the civilian will come into between the freedom fighters. Not that we are very much bothered uh, for such sacrifice, and people are ready to give it. I have seen wherever there is a... or we catch the enemy in an ambush, and the immediate reaction of the enemy is to burn the villages and kill the people of that area, rape the girls. But after that effect, initially we were afraid that the people will just desert us and they will think that this is a menace. But to the contrary, I have found out that they still, still want that we should go in action, even if they have to sacrifice everything. I have been told even by the people to the extent that let there be nobody in Bangladesh, they cannot take the soil out of our country. Soil, let the, remain, uh, let the soil remain. We must continue the action. Therefore, the war will go on.